What's up guys, my name is Ace, and the second weekend of the beta is now live for PS4, as well as the first weekend for Xbox and PC. And with this comes a ton of changes. Treyarch actually posted a massive list of all the patch notes of everything they changed from the first weekend of the beta. Of course, I will leave a link to the patch notes in the description below if you guys want to go check that out in much greater detail. But today I wanted to cover all of the important changes, the ones that really stood out to me, and with many of them I will be showing before and after. So first up, let's cover the big one that most of you guys are probably here for. This is the change to body armor. For those of you guys that didn't watch my video on body armor from last weekend, the way it was working last weekend is it essentially gave you an extra 40 health. It doesn't work 100% like that, but that was the basic idea behind it, is it would basically soak up 40 damage, and the first shot when you got hit would only deal one damage to you, so practically no damage at all. And this led to a lot of frustrating situations where you hit a shot on a body armor user and you only deal one damage when I feel like you should have been dealing a lot more. For the second weekend of the beta, instead of blocking basically that entire first shot from you, now what happens is body armor has a percentage reduction to the shots that you deal, at least for the first two, sometimes two and a half shots or two and a quarter shots, depending on the gun that you're using and the amount of damage that gun tends to deal. This percentage reduction is 50% most of the time for the first two shots. And what this means is basically those two shots are equal to one. So it's still only going to take one extra shot in 99% of the situations in order to get your kill on a body armor user. And I think this is a slightly better way to handle body armor if it's going to be in the game, which it seems like it's not going to be going anywhere. So it is a step in the right direction in my mind because now at least even on your first shot, you are dealing some damage to the enemy player more than just one damage. This is going to cause them to flinch a little bit more if they're not aimed down sight. And it's also going to be a better representation of you hitting them when you're seeing the health bar as you're shooting a guy. You'll see that you're actually dealing damage to them and that body armor doesn't just completely block your bullet damage. Which gives you a not so great feeling when you're shooting a guy. So realistically, body armor really hasn't changed all that much. It's still going to take that extra shot to kill a guy. But this change I think is going to help with the perception of body armor a little bit at least. It's going to make you feel slightly better about shooting a body armor user. And on top of this, something else that they changed is you get an extra 25 score when you kill somebody that has body armor. This is just another one of those things that makes it at least a little bit more rewarding to deal with somebody that has body armor. It helps you get up to your score streak just that little bit faster. And I think that was a good change as well. Of course, I'm still of the mindset that I would rather just see body armor gone completely in the game. But like I said, it's not going anywhere. And this was a step in the right direction. Next up, something that was changed that personally I didn't really notice as being too big of an issue, but if you do look at it frame by frame, it was pretty crazy. When you were shot in the first weekend of the beta, your screen would go almost completely black. It would be a very, very dark red, but it was very, very dark. Like, it would practically black out your whole screen. They've toned that down a little bit for the second weekend of the beta, so I'll just show you before and after here. As you can see there, it's definitely improved. It's really minor, but I did want to point out the before and after for you guys. Next up, we had some changes to the movement systems. We got a slight nerf to the jumping height, as well as we got a cooldown for our jumping. So the more you jump, if you're jumping a bunch of times in a short period of time, your jumps will get lower and lower and lower and less effective. So there is a bit of a cooldown on those jumps now, so you don't spam bunny hopping way too much. This is quite noticeable, but I will say the jump height on your initial jump didn't seem to have changed that much based on my initial experience with the second weekend of the beta so far. As for sliding, they also nerfed sliding. They made it so you slide slower as well as for a shorter distance. And this one is very, very noticeable. In the first weekend of the beta, I was getting around the map very, very quickly with my slides, especially because I was taking advantage of ledge slides. Ledge sliding was actually a thing in this where if you slide just right off of a ledge, it would give you that little bit of an extra boost forward. You would maintain that momentum through that ledge slide. And if you did it right and you were doing it constantly, you could get around the map quite a bit faster. And I was actually going to give this tip this weekend but it doesn't work anymore. They've really nerfed the sliding quite hard from the first weekend of the beta. It's a lot more sluggish and you don't go nearly as far. And personally, I think they took this one a bit too far. I would really like them to find a happy middle ground here between last weekend and this weekend, because as it is right now, they've really nerfed it hard. Next up, we have a bit of a change to the healing mechanics. This was a relatively slight change and the patch notes were actually a little bit off on this based on my initial testing. But what the patch notes state is for both standard heal and stim shot, the time to full health, like after you've actually hit yourself with that stim shot or that adrenaline, this time has been sped up, but they've increased the cooldown time as well. So it's kind of a buff and a nerf at the same time. 
Once you inject yourself, you heal faster, but it takes longer before you can inject yourself again. This holds true for the regular healing. In the first weekend of the beta, the cooldown time in between heals without stim shot was six and a half seconds. Now that's been increased to about seven and a quarter seconds, so a little bit of a longer time between being able to heal yourself. And also going from one to 150 health with regular healing. In last weekend's beta, it was 4.3 seconds. In this weekend's beta, it's 3.3 seconds. So you can get yourself up to full health noticeably faster now with regular healing, but you have to wait an extra three quarters of a second for your cooldown. As for the stim shot, last weekend the cooldown between stim shots was two and a half seconds. This weekend, it's actually been buffed to about two seconds. So it is about half a second faster this weekend. Even though the patch notes say that it got slower, it actually got a faster cooldown time. And it also still got the buff to its faster healing time once you've injected yourself. Last weekend, we went from 1 to 150 health with stim shot in about 2.75 seconds. This weekend, it's about 1.7. So once again, about a second faster to go from 1 health up to full health with the stim shot. So that's really interesting to note. The regular healing got kind of a buff as well as a nerf. I think overall, it was more of a buff than a nerf. But the stim shot got a straight up buff in both areas. So next up, I want to get into score streaks. Now, there were a ton of very specific changes made to each of the score streaks, as well as the cold-blooded basic training skill. They actually nerfed cold-blooded a bit, so streaks are going to be a bit more effective against cold-blooded users, which I think is good. I'm not going to go over every single detail of every one. Like I said, if you guys want all those details, I will leave a link to the patch notes down below, and you can check them out. But just in general, they've made it so that streaks are going to be much more powerful this weekend, and I can't wait to get my hands on them. I haven't had enough gameplay time yet because the servers just went live at the time of me recording this video and doing this testing, but I'm definitely looking forward to these streaks. By the sounds of it, they're going to be quite a bit more powerful this time around. Also, I did want to mention, kind of on a related note with score streaks, they did buff the ComSec device. So with the ComSec device, this is basically like Hardline from the past, but it's a piece of gear instead of a perk. And with this, they reduced the cost for score streaks even more this weekend compared to last weekend, so it's going to be a much more worthwhile piece of gear. Same thing actually goes with the other piece of gear called Equipment Charge, and this is something that I didn't even use at all in the first weekend of the beta. This allows you to charge up your specialist as well as your equipment faster, and they've given that a buff as well, so your equipment charges even faster now when you're using Equipment Charge. So it is good to see that they've buffed these pieces of gear a little bit, make them a little bit more competitive with something like the Stim Shot, which I'm sure the vast majority of people are using either Stim Shot or Armor. Personally, I'm probably still going to be sticking to Simshot, but it is nice to see that these ones have been improved a little bit. Moving on to specialists, a bunch of the specialists got some individual changes made to them. I'm just going to kind of gloss over them super quickly. Ajax got a little bit of a buff to its movement speed while he's using his ballistic shield, which I already found him to be quite annoying. This is going to make him even more annoying, I feel. But according to their global stats, he was underperforming, so they did give him a slight buff to his movement speed with the ballistic shield. Ruin got a bit of a nerf in the sense that they just increased the cooldown timer a bit for the Gravity Slam. So now you can't use the Gravity Slam nearly as often in-game. It's going to take you a bit longer to earn that. As for Torque, they gave Torque a bit of a buff, surprisingly. Torque was one of my more powerful specialists that I like using in objective game modes. They buffed his shield a bit, so his shield lasts longer when it's deployed. And also, it deals more damage with that microwave effect that it has. So it looks like Torque is going to be even more effective at locking down those lanes. As for Profit, they gave a slight buff to the Tempest. What they did with this one is they decreased the cooldown so you can earn it more times in a game or more often or sooner in a game. And also they've increased the movement speed while aiming down sight so you can strafe a bit faster when you're aiming down sight. And this should help you line up your shot a little bit more effectively and possibly evade shots a bit more effectively as well. The final special change that was made was to Nomad. They improved the dog a little bit. They slowed it down slightly so it's not like teleporting across the map. They fixed a few pathing bugs with it as well. And I have actually run into this a couple times in the couple games that I've been doing my testing, and it's noticeably improved. I feel like I can actually shoot the dog if I'm paying attention, but at the same time, it does have a decent amount of health, so if you aren't really paying attention, it will end up taking you out. So finally, the last thing I'm going to cover in this video today, and again, keep in mind, I haven't covered absolutely every detail, so check out the patch notes if you want that. This is just going to be a general overview to the weapon changes in the game. For all of the SMGs, aside from the GKS, they got increased recoil. So there will be a bit more recoil. I think that was a good change as well. I was finding with a lot of the SMGs, they were a bit too effective at picking off AR users at medium range. 
And that's why I basically stuck to SMGs the entire first weekend of the beta. I rarely used assault rifles, or I tried to force myself to use assault rifles, but the SMGs were always my go-to if I was having a rough game. As for the ARs, for pretty much all of them, they increase the aim down sight speed, so you can aim down sight a little bit faster, and also the aim down sight movement speed, so your stray speed when aiming down sight, they've increased that as well. For basically all of the assault rifles in the game, I think this is great too. I felt like they were definitely outclassed by SMGs. This is going to make it so they're a bit more competitive in close quarters, obviously still outclassed by SMGs in close quarters, but it's going to give them a bit more of a chance against those SMG users. We actually got a similar buff for the Titan, which is the only LMG that we have access to so far in the game. They increased its hipfire accuracy, increased its movement speed when aiming down sight and aiming down sight and firing, and also they buffed the stock attachment so that will increase your aim down sight when moving and firing even more than it used to. As for snipers, with the Koshka, they have nerfed it slightly. They've slowed down the aim down sight time a little bit with Quick Draw 1 as well as Quick Draw 2, and I think that's good because it was absolutely ridiculous. It's probably still going to be a bit faster than I would personally like it to be, but at the same time, it's nice to see a bit of an adjustment to the Koshka because it did aim down sight way too fast in my opinion. And with the shotguns, mainly the Mog-12, which is the pump action shotgun, they did give it a slightly increased one-hit kill potential, which I think is nice to see. So with that, we're going to wrap up today's video. That's all the things I really wanted to cover. Those are the main points. Those are the things that I feel we're going to notice more than anything else within the game. Of course, I'd like to know in the comment section below, what do you guys think of these changes so far? Personally, I am so happy to see most of these changes. There are very few changes here that I don't like. There's a bunch of things I didn't even know I wanted, but then when I look at the patch notes, I think back and I'm like, yeah, actually, that is a good change. Good job, Treyarch. So I'm really excited for Beta Weekend 2. Most notably, I'm excited for these score streak buffs. I can't wait for it. Really looking forward to this. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, make sure you subscribe if you want some more Black Ops 4 content. I'll talk to you guys next time. Yeah.